All right, let's do this. Greetings, everybody. This is Leviathan here, and today I'm going to be talking exclusively about my thoughts and feelings regarding BlizzCon 2018, the Diablo Immortal announcement, and sort of my uh, uh, days of going through it uh, while out in California. So, you know, I'd like to try to speak for myself as much as possible. I did talk to a lot of people and trying to gather what the feelings were out in the community and also help me come to terms with some of my own feelings as well um, i'd like to explore all sides uh the community's feelings what blizzard potentially was feeling uh how they may have misread the community and you know try to be as candid as possible i'm not here to apologize for blizzard or the community i think that um it's possible to see this from both sides. I think missteps were made on both sides, and I'll get into a little bit of that as well. But I do think it's worth kind of talking through everything uh, in terms of mismanagement of expectations, perhaps the tone deafness or out of touchness that we're starting to kind of attribute to Blizzard as a whole, potentially. Uh, and, and, and yeah, just mobile gaming I guess as well too somewhere in there so <clears throat> in any case uh, for those that don't exactly know kind of where we've been this year 2018 has been a tumultuous one perhaps for Blizzard fans Diablo fans in particular we have been on the same patch of D3 for quite some time 2.6.1 so you can kind of understand where the community is coming from when they say we want new stuff we want more content um, and these are your PC gamers that we're talking about, the people playing Diablo 3 primarily on PC, even though it's also on console now, and particularly just being released for the Nintendo Switch, which actually was pretty well received. So that was kind of one thing that unfortunately went under the uh, news cycle because Diablo Immortal took so much of the space. Um, but yeah, the Switch seems to be well received, that version, and you know... The, that's part of the community. That's the community looking at what's being offered to us and saying that uh, right now it's not enough. We know or should know or have some inkling of an idea that Diablo 4 or whatever the next game is, is in the works. So we're supposed to take heart in that. But I guess right now the community is saying prove it to us in a way. Uh, prove to us that you care about us because what we've seen based on BlizzCon based on the announcements and updates to D D3, which have been essentially non-existent outside of seasonal themes, which haven't done much uh, to bring true change to the game just yet. Hopefully there's still a future for that to um, maybe correct course. But yeah, it's just, if you think of all of that in the mindset and how the, co the community was able to hype itself up with the video that released Midsummer, kind of saying the future of Diablo is bright, uh, multiple projects was mentioned at that time as well. We didn't know what platform or state any of those projects were in. Then we began, we began to get leaks and rumors of Netflix series, comic books, the Book of Adria. Uh, eventually, Nintendo Switch version was revealed at Gamescom. And so imagine getting to BlizzCon, especially with a blog post about a couple weeks beforehand, saying, temper your expectations. You know, it essentially said without saying that D4 is not coming. So you go into BlizzCon... And you're not really expecting Diablo 4, but you're still expecting something particularly hype because they told us they had announcements to share with us. And just the messaging would sort of suggest you should be there as a Diablo fan. You should be ready and excited and hyped for what's to come. Then you get to BlizzCon. And uh, one of the first things I walked into when I saw the show floor was the demo station that wasn't on the map, right? We all saw the empty space. And I was saying perhaps a space is just a space, but it turns out it was for something brand new. And that was really exciting, but it was also puzzling and potentially troublesome because we're looking at these boxes that are really small and we're saying screens can't fit under that. PCs can't fit under that. What is that? Is that mobile? And for so long, prior to BlizzCon, the meme in the community, the joke of the community, again, this PC primary community was <laughs> mobile. That's what's gonna be announced at BlizzCon. That'll really get them. And it was it was always said tongue-in-cheek. It was always said with nobody. And I think the correction to this statement that I'm about to say was, you know, nobody wants this. I think the way to pivot it is no hardcore, core Blizzard Diablo fan wants a mobile game. 
not for a full-fledged experience in the Diablo world, not right now. We have been with Reaper of Souls for four years after its release, and granted, it's been great. Honestly, Reaper of Souls did so much to buy back a lot of the community's faith with multiple patches uh, supporting Diablo 3 after Reaper of Souls, which was so monumental in bringing a lot of players back and continuing to show support and content uh, development for the game. Rise of the Necromancer was another entry with that in mind. And now it's been, you know, about a year plus of the same. So you can understand that players are a little itchy to get something. And then when uh, the opening ceremony starts and it looks like they're saving Diablo for last and we're still hyped, we're still excited for what's to come because why not, right? Like if you're going to make such a big deal out of the franchise getting some shine because we'd already we had already been essentially not neglected but feeling kind of down on the previous blizzcon offerings um you know outside of maybe the necromancer and the 20th anniversary and that stuff there really hadn't been too much shine and brand newness for diablo so it got main stage billing it was last and it had a panel coming up right after the stage was set for some bombshell to drop and then Blizzard, uh, via Wyatt Chang, who I will, you know, fully disclose is somebody that um, is a friend of mine. I, I talk to him from time and again, not like every day or anything, but we're friendly. And he gets up there and starts talking about mobile gaming. And I can't tell you, I've been to four BlizzCons in a row. So 2018 was my fourth one. And I cannot tell you a time ever where BlizzCon opening ceremony felt that eerie. And I use the word eerie because it was as if everyone held their breath simultaneously or just stopped like having a heartbeat. I think I think it's fair to say that the community as a whole looked at what was happening on stage and could not believe what their eyes were observing. Like our minds like were starting to melt. It was insane. Um, and it just didn't make sense. It didn't make sense why this was being shown to us. Those who had traveled thousands of miles, some from out of the country, uh, spending thousands of dollars for hotels and accommodations and food and like planes, everything to come to BlizzCon where it's your biggest, most like, uh, loyal people that are going to be the ones in that in those seats at the opening ceremony and to just deliver that product at that time which I think is the biggest key here did not go over well to say the least you've seen the backlash at this point now by the time you're probably viewing my video of the internet like having a meltdown essentially over what was shown to us as uh, Diablo fans it wasn't okay um, we reacted viscerally because we were cut viscerally. We felt ourselves get gutted at that moment that Diablo Immortal was announced as a full-fledged, built from the ground up, in conjunction with NetEase, uh, mobile game. And really the thought process was, who asked for this? Like, why are you showing this to us? Who's this for? And it didn't feel like it was for anybody sitting in those seats. Or even anybody watching at home, to be honest. Because the people that are buying the virtual tickets are, again, also those really uh, stalwart, longtime fans of Blizzard who probably are watching on their PC and not their mobile. Um, and so it hurt. I think it hurt from the community side. And that hurt was then echoed into the furthest reaches of the internet via Reddit, via social media platforms. Uh, the media starting to cover it, many personalities within the Blizzard community and even outside of it, getting wind of it and starting to cover it. And it was wild. It was so dead silent in that room. It made me feel really uncomfortable and my heart sank. And I just wondered why I was there at that moment. It wasn't for me. Uh, fast forward to the What's Next panel and you know now they're starting to dive into why we should be excited for this game showing us zones and skills and all sorts of stuff that are supposed to make us 
you know, ready to buy into Diablo Immortal. And I think we need to take a moment to say that, like, the idea here is not a bad one. Like, Blizzard should want to explore other platforms. They should want to move some of their IPs to other places because they can likely gain more fans, more market share, more money for the company, and maybe that translates into further development for bigger projects, projects that we are really anticipating, like Diablo 4, and so on. So maybe it's not a bad idea as a business to do this. It's just the timing of it, the place of it. Wrong place, wrong time. It felt like they could have announced this at Gamescom or even outside of a convention, like I've heard from some people, and it might have gone over better. Or the alternate, like people have been saying, couple it with something else that's for us. We need more assurance that Blizzard knows that a lot of their best fans, a lot of their long-term fans, our PC gamers at heart spend thousands of dollars on these machines, upgrading them with graphics cards and stuff time and again, clearing space out to load more gigabytes of Blizzard information and, and games onto our systems. We needed to know that they still cared about us. It felt like, I used this analogy earlier today, it felt like you were in a relationship and your significant other came home and started telling you about how they're so excited to meet this other person uh, that they're ready to fall in love with and have bought like a Mercedes Benz for and stuff, you know? It's like, why are you telling me this? You and I are in a relationship and you're talking about this other person? Who are they? What do they have to do with us? That's what it really felt like. And at that point, it feels like, wow, maybe we should break up, you know? Maybe this relationship's not going where we thought it was supposed to go. Are we are we going to go see different people? What's happening? Like, that's really the best analogy I could get, um, you know, thanks to a friend who helps me kind of start to pull some thoughts together. It was wild. Uh, and again, that was starting to be expressed throughout the community with, you know, we have infamously the red shirt guy who asked if this was an out of season April Fool's joke during the Q&A time of the What's Next panel that was received with, you know, some criticism from the community but i think it was really an impassioned moment where this guy was dead serious he wanted to know if this was for real and he just voiced it that way in that question but it was the question that was on our minds is this real is this a joke um and then the other major question was okay fine you're making this mobile game even if i wrap my head around that Will it be something I can play on my PC? Because that's where I'm invested in playing. That's where I want to play my games. And that was met with a no. Not at this time. And that received that answer received boos at BlizzCon. It received people audibly saying, boo, no. Why? That's in, that's insane. That might be a first. I don't think I've... I know personally I've never heard booing. I can't say I've been to everything at BlizzCon, but I've never heard them boo. BlizzCon's usually the most positive of places where people come together and they're really excited about what Blizzard has to offer. Um, you know, some levels of excitement can differ, but usually it's just all positive. And this was the first time I really felt the negativity um, from the inside and the outside. Uh, so it left me in a daze, to be honest. I was supposed to start like covering interviews and um, trying the demo out in the press room and stuff, and I just didn't feel like it. I didn't feel... I felt so disconnected suddenly from Diablo and the and the community and what was being shown to me. It, it, it was weird, man. It's, it's still even right now hard to describe because I wanted to ask questions. I was like, okay, so how can I find out if this game is for me? Because they're trying to tell us that we're developing this for the mobile market, but we also want our core players, you guys, to go there and meet us at the mobile market and this game will have things that will bring you there. So I'm in this group interview, this is now after the what's next panel, racking my brain for questions, right? Because so long we've just been on these rails of get seats, opening ceremony happens, right from there go to the what's next panel, right from there go to the group interview. So I haven't had time to like breathe or think or decipher anything and I'm sitting in this room with a bunch of media around me, I was like what? can I ask that would like help me find peace or reassurance that maybe maybe in my early snap reactions to this like there's some good to take out of this for playability and for like hardcore gamers like myself 
asked a question about I don't even remember something like endgame features systems like stuff that uh, ARPG vet would need to know to know if you know the game's moving in the right direction no answers no answers it, every question was sort of met with like it's a not time yet where we're not there yet we're not ready to discuss this yet so it felt like what was being presented to us was still so early on too then that began to beg the question again so why present this now why give this to us now is it if it wasn't even like that far along or like you weren't confident enough to be able to like really dive into talking about it why then it, and I've seen this sentiment too that maybe it would have been just better to stay silent at BlizzCon even though it would have sucked to have yet again another BlizzCon where the Diablo fans don't really have a lot to leave with <laughs> we had announcements to leave with this time but it felt worse it felt worse than the years when we left with uh, well our game didn't get talked about our franchise didn't get talked about maybe next year because it just shows that the direction that Blizzard's moving in is scary and it's scary to those of us that have invested our like time, lives, livelihood for content creators in particular in the PC platform and want to be able to continue to do that job. Want to be able to continue to produce content for all of you out there who like to enjoy our content. Yeah, things have to move forward in order for us to get more stuff, brand new stuff, and they have to move forward in the right direction. And I just, I'm worried. I'm worried that this isn't it because if mobile's the future, which Blizzard seems to really be honing in on, uh, stating that, you know, Diablo is the one getting the treatment right now, but it might be coming to their other franchises, too. <sighs> then yikes, man. That's rough. Uh, that's rough. Uh, and, and I think, I don't know, I'm so all over the place with this, I'm sorry, because I'm just trying to kind of let it all come stream of consciousness. I think what we need is something to let us know. The same way I was searching for reassurance in that interview and couldn't find any solace. Uh, the same way that even after trying the demo and feeling like this is going to be a fine mobile game, but it's not for me, or it doesn't feel like it's for me, I need to know about the future. I need some clarity as to whether Blizzard still does care about their PC gamers and their console players and the people that have built them up to this point to be able to make a pivot like this. It's fine if you go to mobile, but you have to come back. You need to be able to deliver to us something that we can sink our teeth into and be excited for. And it's not enough these days anymore to say multiple teams, multiple projects. I think we've heard that. I think I think if you have to keep reiterating it and we've and it seems like it's been heard via the video, via the blog posts, and now again on like day two of BlizzCon, it was sort of the new messaging. I almost felt like they had a midnight meeting, like how can we kind of like calm things down just say multiple projects so they know that we're still working on other stuff like we already knew that though going in i don't think anyone was expecting a diablo 4 announcement too it would have been like the sky in the pie in the sky surprise and a lot of people have been saying well maybe do the like the the e3 um elder scrolls thing where you just have a teaser or something like that probably would have been fine again if you coupled the mobile announcement with something else just to keep the faith of the people your diehards that were there and watching from afar i think this announcement would have gone over way differently would have been received far differently so it's a community versus pr versus the devs kind of relationship and i hate to use versus but it kind of feels that way like there's all these different sides involved um and there's this you know sort of like the community, I think, went a little too far with the personal attacks on people. I think that was unnecessary. It kind of diluted what the community was trying to express, um, which they did well in most cases, which was just like this passion of being misheard or misunderstood. Like, we want to make sure Blizzard understands us, and it seems like they don't right now, that they're out of touch. And that's what I attribute to kind of like the dev side, which is like, they're probably really excited about a mobile game and making it, and they should be. And we're going to be skeptical of that, and we should be, um, but not here. And maybe that's where the PR side comes in, is why did they choose BlizzCon to do this? What what influence did NetEase have in making this decision, too? Like, since they're a partner, and they seem to have a great stake in this game coming to life, were they the ones pushing, like, hey, we want, you know, some primetime real estate. Announce this at BlizzCon so people can, like, see our name up there 
in the trailer, which was like the very next, you know, flash of names, you know, in conjunction with Nettie's or whatever it said. Understanding that that also causes Western gamers to be very, very scared of what you're about to show us. Because NetEase has the reputation they have in the East, being viewed by the West, of just like heavily monetizing or in-app purchases in their games, which seems to fly finally in the East, but it's going to be really met with a brick wall of unhappiness in the West. And Alan Adam, uh, who's one of the co-founders of Blizzard, seemed to really be harping on just mobile being the future, on them wanting to... Uh, conquer the western and the eastern market at the same time with this mobile game and on this platform um, again a- admirable makes sense that you want to take that market over you're missing out on market share hearthstone is there but it's almost like a happy accident that is there you haven't built a game specifically for mobile yet and i i feel it's maybe just unfortunate that diablo ended up being the franchise they chose for this given where we were at with diablo at this current moment in time again wrong place wrong time so i you know i don't want to go on too long because i felt you've probably seen a lot of these types of videos from all the different content creators we're all very concerned very worried about the future looking for help reassurance understanding uh and it seems murky right now i i hear that diablo 3 will hopefully get something in the near future so that's something we can look out for it might start to help with the uh, making amends or healing process or apology or whatever you want to label it as coming out of BlizzCon 2018. But I think our community is definitely hurting right now. And we have to do something to get it back to the way it used to be, which I don't even know if we will go there until like something really significant occurs. But we definitely need help. I just, every time I reach out to somebody, I just see a lot of confusion, a lot of frustration, a lot of, I don't get it. I, I, why why this why now why deliver that to me is really the feeling that's been coming out so I guess I'll kind of close things up with um, hopefulness maybe this is the way that they prep uh, platforms for what will be the next big sort of PC oriented entry into the franchise they now know they can do it on the Switch, right? They put D3 on the Switch, so they're familiar with that platform now. They're going to make a mobile game, whether we like it or not. It will exist, and so they'll have some potential mastery of that platform. And then maybe that primes them so when D4, or whatever the next game is, comes out, they have it ready to go simultaneous release on all platforms, and maybe even with crossplay achieved. Maybe that's the ultimate goal. Maybe this Diablo Immortal is the sacrificial lamb in a way to get us there that's probably like the best hopeful spin i can give or looking at least at like if some features that look really cool in immortal um have influence on the next diablo 4 pc oriented version of uh the franchise something that can hopefully inform you know a good product to come out on day one whenever we get that but it's asking a lot of the community to have more patience and more understanding when we just see things coming out that could be cool but aren't for us so i will leave it at that i would love to hear from you guys in the comments uh as to how you feel these days regarding everything that transpired at blizzcon um it's odd to make a video that feels like this because i did have a good time at blizzcon i got to stream multiple times i got to enjoy hanging out with friends i got to for all intents and purposes have a blast uh, and I'm really happy that I was there I just wish that I left with more I wish that I could be here today hyping you guys up for something that's coming relatively soon and exciting and you know for us I, I just keep coming back to that and I hope it doesn't sound entitled or anything like that but like you gotta know who you're talking to um and appreciate them which I, I i hope they do i think i know they do uh, it's just they have a weird way of showing it right now so that's it guys uh until the next video hopefully i'll come back with something uh, a little more uplifting for coverage thank you for your time and for your patience and uh, me making this it took me a while to get back from california i was out there for a while um, but i hope this uh 
at least gives you some thoughts and clarity into where my head's been at still trying to figure out exactly how i feel i don't think i'll spend a lot of time with diablo immortal when it comes out you know i hope they make a great game i hope it works for blizzard but i'm pc gamer man and that's what i want so until next time see you in the next video and thanks for watching